So three three the score. We're with Anthony Recker, former catcher in the big leagues. I feel bad. All, all the uh, defensive plays we've seen from catchers in the show so far, Anthony, have been blunders. But you saw something you liked. Yeah, I mean, look, go to the Arizona Diamondbacks, and I, I went into that organization, and they are big on framing. They that's they care a lot about framing, and they seem to find guys who can do it. Back when I was there, it was Alex Avila, Jeff Mathis. They knew who. You know, could could make a pitch. Now it's Jose Herrera apparently back there making just really angering Adam Duvall, as you can see here by the reaction. But I, I love if we can go back to that to the frame job there. I love the way he's he it's really subtle. He lets this ball travel, lets the movement of the pitch take it back over the plate, and he angles his body. So he's set up in here, which is this is really tough to go across the plate and get a pitch. But the way he angles his body and gets his glove out in front of it and almost gently guides it back to the middle of the plate. Can we put that back up? Go ahead. Dave, could you put that back up? I want to hear that from, from a catcher. Yep. This down on one knee. <laughs> Is it easier to frame this pitch down on a knee than conventionally? It can be. It can be. Now, it, it just depends right now the way he's set up. And it depends on what you like to do, what you're most comfortable with. But you have the leg up on the inside here because you're expecting and you want room here on the inside to be able to work, right? And But you want to be strong on that side. Anything out here, you're not really expecting to get it. But because the right leg is down, that gives him a lot of room out here to work. And he's able to, he, he's almost, he's angled off, right? So that back leg, when it's the, the leg that's down is always back. That angles his body away from that outside pitch, which allows it to travel. So on this specific pitch, it just works out really well. It allows him to let it travel, and then he's able to just, with the angle he creates with his arm, just guide it to the middle of the plate. Right. With the runner on third base in this position, or yeah, runner on second wanna... base, right? You see this a lot. Yeah. Is that is that? To me, it seems like it puts a catcher kind of in a bad spot, bad spot. where you're almost a framer and you're not going to be as active yeah. or accurate throwing and being aggressive. Uh, for some reason, front offices, and look, they, they have all the numbers, they have all the formulas and equations that they use. They've decided that framing a pitch is more important than being able to block every ball. I, I, don't, I, I don't really understand. As a catcher, someone who... I was always taught coming up, your first responsibility is keep the ball in front of you. That's what you need to do. You don't want to allow that guy to take an extra base, especially a run to score. You're out there working your butt off on the mound. I don't want to let a ball get by me and allow a run to score. That was, it, there couldn't be a worse feeling as a catcher than having that happen. So putting myself in a situation where I'm down on a knee with a runner on third, or even a runner on first or second, and I have a guy on the mound that I know might spike a ball, I might have to get up and be athletic, I don't want to be in that situation where I'm down on one knee. I want to be up and ready to move. And I think that's the biggest thing. You have to situationally know who you have on the mound, who's on the bases, are they good at taking an extra base if a ball does trickle away from me. Those kind of things would come into play and tell me whether or not I could be down on a knee in a scenario where a runner could advance.